Dean Humuni from 3D Action Video Inc. And I'm just really proud and excited to announce that we moved up our release date of the Equinox Housing GoPro Guide to Filming Underwater from start to finish to last night, December 9th. And that product is now available at our website at 3dactionvideoinc.com. Originally, we were asked by Equinox Housing to draft a guide to film in 2D and 3D for higher-end camcorders, which we completed approximately two weeks ago. That guide is 500 pages long and included 26 video tutorials in over eight hours in length. And we met with dive shops and they asked us, really asked us to do something to see if we could do something for the GoPro uh, 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 camera to try to take our groundbreaking technology and procedures that we use to color correct underwater footage and see if we could apply those to a GoPro. And I must say that we have been resoundingly successful and we're gonna go over some of the things that we're doing as part of this video tutorial. So why don't we start by playing this little piece of film and I'm gonna point out some drawbacks or flaws in the film. This was filmed with a GoPro camera off of Aomu Harris uh, by William Drucko that owns Scuba Views, uh, one of the largest dive shops in Las Vegas. And we have worked very closely together to really determine what tools are gonna to go into this package. So let's go ahead and play this film and I'm gonna point out some issues which a lot of you may have and you may look at this film and think it's great. And then once we point out some of the drawbacks and how to fix them, you're gonna be really happy in what you see. So I'll just go ahead and start playing it. And the first thing I wanna notice is we have something going on up here. There is some distortion going on in the film and then I want you to look at all of the cloudiness which is sitting in the water here. And there's two issues. First, the water is very cloudy. And secondly, you have what's called a lot of noise. And noise is very problematic in a low light blue environment, especially for cameras that have a small sensor, which is what the GoPro has. So we can see a lot, the water's not really clear the whole picture appears somewhat kind of cloudy and we'll just continue on. And I'm just going to stop it here for a little while and you'll notice this graininess. There's a graininess once again in the water and that's referred to as noise as a result of the small sensor which is on the GoPro camcorder. And one other point, this film here was filmed with a red filter on the GoPro. I just want to say if you are going to film, and I don't care whether it's a GoPro or the $12,000 setup I have, you should always film with a red filter unless you are filming in a macro environment with lights and because that's the type of film that we're really able to correct. If you try to use a GoPro below 30 feet without a red filter, you aren't going to be able to save the film and we'll actually have a discussion about that. So I kind of like this film that Bill took. He has a lot of fish in it. Uh, the colors are kind of going all over the place, though, that we see some distortion coming in here right in the water. It's a cloudiness, and I have noticed that underwater the GoPro is having some issues regarding what's called color vacillation, or uh, what's also referred to in the film Underwater World as banding. And we have a tool that's going to fix that. We can see we have blue over here. It kind of gets purplish over in this area. We have a lot of noise going on in the film here. We have a scuba diver. His reds look pretty good, but we'll just keep going through the film. And I'm kind of looking at the film. It wasn't filmed on a tripod. It's kind of moving all over the place. There's some jerkiness in the camera. We're going to talk about some stabilization tools really quick. And this distortion going on in the film up here. Maybe he had a bubble inside the lens or whatever was happening. We have the general cloudiness, a lot of noise once again in the water. This film is just filled with a tremendous amount of noise. And also the coral here is just not very crisp. And I have noticed and read about that on the new Hero 3 that um, they actually got closer where the film would be clear on closer angle shots, but they gave away some clarity on the farther angles and you mix in the water medium. But this coral just is not very clear. 
I want to point out what noise is. You can see noise is all this kind of grainy stuff in here in the film. It's not really very good. Um, on our camcorders that we use, the much higher level units, we don't get anywhere near this much noise, but we do get noise. If you're going to film underwater, any camcorder less than $15,000, you're, you're always going to battle noise. But the GoPro clearly has got a noise issue. The camera is moving all over the place. It's kind of jerky the way that the filming is getting done. And that's one of the things we talk about the guides that we have for the GoPro 19 basic rules of underwater filming that's going to step you through the theory about how to film underwater. And that discussion is approximately 100 pages long. You're going to learn a tremendous about thinking about setting up your shots and how to get that wonderful film I know all of you want to get. So we're just kind of going through the same thing. We have a little washout here, uh, graininess in the film. We got this distortion problem going on. We have kind of washed out colors in the purple and reds here. Let's just continue on. So now we're going to do where we have put the film through seven of a potential 18 procedures. Here's the original film. I just turned around and spent maybe 10 minutes. I did some of the procedures. I had to do two or three renders on the film because some of these renders are very extensive, including what's called the denoise to get all that graininess. You see how a tremendous amount of the graininess is now out of the water. We turned around and darkened the water to create a darker blue to make the reds and all the other colors pop. We have a much better definition going on with the fish and also the coral because we use a sharpened tool specifically made for underwater. Uh, as part of our review procedures that we spent two and a half years and went over $150,000 software and over 100 packages and over 1,500 tools to find the tools that work underwater and that is all explained as part of the video tutorials that come as part of this course. Part of what you're going to get is an approximate 400 page guide and also 22 streaming tutorials coming from contentshelf.com that steps you through these very easy to use tools that make sense and after you hear why we picked those tools that you'll understand why we picked them and you'll be so happy that you wound up using these tools to really get your film great. This doesn't even look like the same film and we did this relatively quickly using uh, seven out of our 18 tools. But let's just continue to go ahead and play. You'll notice, I'll stop the film, we have a little distortion once again in the watercolor going back here. I did this relatively quickly. I would have put this film through another two or three steps to have gotten the same watercolor across the whole spectrum. We do have a tool which is called Color Flicker Remove that'll blow it through your whole clip and try to get the color to be the same. But once again, we're just looking at some of these concepts. Let's look at some of the colorization that we have here. We have a general cloudiness as part of the film. We have maroon colors, but clearly the colors are coming out much better and using some of our techniques. The skin has got a much richer tone to it. I did darken this a little bit too much on the black. We've lost some detail on the face, and that would be a secondary procedure that I would wind up going through to wind up fixing that. But clearly we have much brighter yellows. The reds are popping much more. Even the silver tank appears much more natural. We have a more um, uh, richer blue watercolor. And we actually are going to show you how to use mats, which are simple to do, to be able to go in and really change that watercolor related to the water, but not affect the coral. You can see the difference in the coral, especially in the colorization, but I also want you to take a look at the difference in the detail that we have, especially along this ridge right here. Compare this ridge of the coral compared to what's on here. 
compared to our detail that we have on this purple coral, which is really the true color, to the detail which is on here. These are just much sharper lines which are really going on in here. We can see some of the sharpness coming out on the coral, and that's a sharpen tool that we specifically use, which is the best one that we found for the underwater environment. We can see that we have a much broader range of colorization as part of our film. We have some leakage coming in here, and that comes up regarding the issue of noise. If I was going to finalize or do another round on this film, I would have laid down what's called another denoise mat in the blue spectrum that you can do in about 30 seconds. It denoises this water one more time, but it's part of the video tutorials that you'll see all those tools being used. Wow, just take a look at the, these two shots. I mean, this is colorization of the water all over the place. Look at this variance from here up to this corner. We go from a purple to a medium blue to a light blue. We have a tremendous amount of noise in the spectrum. We've come along and made basically the water almost the same color. We've been able to denoise the water. We have much more vibrant colors coming out in the coral. And we can see some of the differences in the film. Especially you get up here, we have much brighter yellows bouncing off of this red. And of course, all these colors that we show you how to do a mat for the water and then a separate mat for the coral. I probably over ramped up this coral a little bit too much into the red spectrum. Um, but I would go back and actually tweak it. But clearly, as part of the techniques that we discuss and we're going to show you, including that we have one video tutorial, 52 minutes on the use of water and shooting angles. It discusses our theory about the colorization of the water to really create that offset to make things really kind of pop. And we can see the difference that we're getting is specifically in the yellows. We have a much more richer tone here. We've toned down some of this overexposure, which is due to the small sensor in the lens. We've gotten rid of all of the noise in the water. We've darkened the background a little. We've really made these corals look like what they are in the natural environment and the, two, and the true beauty they've had. Uh, we also used the sharpen tool to really bring out that detail in the coral along these particular lines. It's just much sharper and crisper. And then once again we have a different colorization regarding the fish. We actually can turn these reddish. We could make them less reddish. We could make them more yellow on the tools we're going to show you how to wind up using those particular tools because a lot of times when you're doing underwater the colorization you are acting as an artist and you are interpreting what you felt that particular underwater environment looked like when you were filming. And as we all know, when you take a dive light and you flash it on the coral, it has a completely different color. And that's where creativity and your artistic talent is going to come into place to try to show what the reef is like and its beauty based on your interpretation. And these tools that we're going to show you allow you to do that. Wow, just, you know, I ballooned this film up to the full screen. This is just a magnificent shot, even with a GoPro. This is, this is a, a magnificent shot. Beautiful watercolors, yellows popping out, a good offset between the water and the coral. We talk about the use of dark blue water as part of the guide and making it as a background, including what we call infinity space to really make all the other colors pop, including reds, yellows, and whites. Once again, we have some distortion going on on this part of the clip regarding the colorization. And I would have come in here and laid down another mat 
to have cleaned up the water on one more shot in here before we moved forward. Um, and that's easily done to get it the way that this particular scene looks here with a nice consistent watercolor going across the entire scene. We're also going to discuss about shooting. And one of the things we say is try to have 25 to 50 percent of water in the scene and water always going across the top. That just creates a medium to have fish and also to have that rich blue to make everything else really pop out of pop out of the scene. And we go over all, all these different types of styles that have been learned through years and years of filming, by the way. Just look at those rich yellows and those fish. It's just really, really amazing for something that we did in, you know, approximately seven minutes using some of the tools we use. And that was really the first round of the colorization that we did on the film. Wow, just look at this right here. This is just really fantastic. A nice dark blue, yellow related to the fish. Nice yellows popping. It's just creating a really nice scene here to relate to the average individual of what the beauty of these reefs really are. Uh, we also applied a stabilization tool. This film is kind of, he's moving all over the place. And we talk in the guide about using a tripod are the proper way to wind up approaching the critters and your shooting angles to really wind up helping you get those magnificent scenes. Once again, we have a nice scene here, probably over ramped on the reds a little, and that would require some tone down, but we just wanted to do something very quick to be able to show everyone on YouTube exactly what some of our techniques can do and the difference that it's going to wind up making in your film. So let's go back to a comparison shot again. Then we'll come back to something. Let's say we're in, uh, I want to get something that really shows a striking difference. Right here. We just released last night on December 9th, the guide for the GoPro. It's up on our server and a product available. This product sells for $299, but as part of this, that we're going to put a discount code in. It's called GoPro small letters and if you go to our website and use the coupon code gopro you can actually pick up the guide with the streaming tutorials and book for 199 dollars i encourage all of you to go to 3dactionvideoinc.com once again 3dactionvideoinc.com and go under products and select the gopro guide and seriously consider purchasing this product to show you the type of techniques that we use. All the tools that we use, we use tools from Boris FX, Gen Arts, Red Giant, and Tiffin DFX to get these wonderful colors to come back. Their packages run inside a Sony Vegas Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, Avid Media Composer, and Final Cut Pro. So that kind of covers the whole gamut of the programs. These tools do not run inside of the Cineform software which is what came with your camcorder. Now you can download a 30 day trial version of Adobe Premiere Pro from Adobe. In fact, you had a 30 day trial version from almost all, all the software vendors. And the trial versions for the applications to buy the add-on packages, those typically have a 15 day trial version on it. You can get Boris Continuum Complete, Tiffin DFX, GenArt Sapphire, GenArt's Edge, and Red Giant, Colorista 2 on a 15 day trial period. As part of the tutorials, we have an extensive discussion about how to acquire your software. Very smart way to get your software at a 50% discount. So if you want your GoPro film to be looking like our film, I highly recommend you go to 3dactionvideoinc.com, go to our products tab under the GoPro filming guide, order the guide. You're going to be happy, you're going to be satisfied. It's a downloadable guide along with 22 streaming tutorials. You can look at it on your iPad, on your computer, anything you want to do. And I hope to also receive comments from any of you that uh, purchased the guide. We always want user feedback from the people that use our products. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Once again, use that GoPro, small letter GoPro, as the discount, the coupon code, and you will get $100 off the guide 
at checkout as a result of watching this tutorial on YouTube. Thank you.